today we are into chapter six and the final chapter of this book based on um, Robert Brummett, Unity Minister and Author, Birthing a Greater Reality. We've had some fabulous discussion on Wednesday evening uh, dialogue and throughout the week since more of you have been present here lately. So last week, we considered the tools that we use for everyday evaluation of our experience. And as we are evolving into a more awakened being, we also recognize that those tools allow us to accept the polarities that we face each and every day. By using our spiritual tools in a more consistent way, the tools of our mindfulness practice, the tools of our meditation and prayer time, the tools of denial and affirmation. These support the awakening from the unconscious into the conscious. And they also balance our addiction to attachments and outcome, the suffering that was uh, spoken about by the young Dalai Lama in that video clip. Now, if any of you believe yourself to not have an addiction to attachments or outcomes, I dare you to just say so out loud and allow the universe to show you firsthand what those addictions are. It will be interesting nonetheless. So Deepak Chopra says that the real God is wholeness. When we have the ability to experience wholeness, when our spiritual self and our physical self are living in a way of balance and union, as we step into and embrace our evolution as conscious beings, we remember the purpose from chapter one. Robert Brummett said, the purpose of this life experience is to deeply know both aspects of yourself, to fully embrace both of them, your spiritual and your human. You are here to experience not only the spiritual and the human, you are here to experience oneness and separation, infinity and limitation, reality and illusion. Polarities that we must manage every single day. He went on to say that we are here to be the eyes and ears and hands and feet of the one that we call God. You are here to become a partner and co-creator in the universe. And when we do that, when we know that we know that we are partners and co-creators with the divine, we know exactly what is ours to do in that moment. Trust. Learn to trust that process. Learn to trust that you are unity principle number two, the divine spark, that Christ lives within you, that God lives within you. 50-50, not 80-20, either way, 50-50, an equal balance. And so as we are co-creators, partners with the divine, our lives can sometimes shift in that awareness that we hold minute to minute about that for ourselves. And when we're in that place of shifting awareness, it sometimes feels as if our life is contracting before it expands. We may be working really hard on ourselves spiritually and doing good in the world through outreach and projects. 
We could be following our dreams and allowing our heart to lead the way in compassion. And yet, we are still wondering why we may be having issues. We're on the spiritual path, and yet our life shows examples of upset, concern. There could be a financial challenge, an emotional challenge, a physical body temple challenge. It could feel that we have lost our way spiritually. We were on the spiritual path and then we woke up one day and, wow, I don't feel connected. I'm sure you've all had those days where we've had to recenter ourselves because we feel stuck in some way, like all of a sudden we are in a room with no windows. Darkness, the shadow. All of those things could make us feel or tell us there is an appearance of disconnect or lack of progress. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes that is just the way it looks when it contracts before it expands. Like the caterpillar that must be confined into the chrysalis in order to emerge as a butterfly before it stretches its wings of beauty, that time in the middle, Ilana Van Zant calls it in the meantime, is what we also call the darkness before the dawn, the calm before the storm. We sense that this transformation is happening, but it feels like there's no movement for this brief split second. Sometimes it feels like that second is an eternity. And when things feel tight and uncomfortable, it's easy to fall to panic and fear, to, to want to act out and rush to a conclusion, to change our trajectory or our plan or our pathway or stop listening to spiritual guidance. Not a good idea. Just trust that that contraction will open to expansion. So don't fall to panic in that moment. Breathe. Use your spiritual tools to ease those feelings of discomfort. We might spin our wheels mentally trying to logically understand, but when we attempt to only look at our life through the ego-based logical outer systems and not turn within, we set ourselves up for failure, hardship, and struggle. At these times, there's really nothing to do except be patient and persevere. I know. You're sitting there saying, oh my God, anything but that. Amen to that. It's hard. Nobody wants to be patient. God. But we all know that Einstein quote that says, we cannot solve problems using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. How many of you have tested that theory? More than once. Yeah, I bet you have. I have. I learn from my experience from what I call a mistake. By not listening to my guidance, I learn to listen to that guidance more 
It's a polarity. It's not good or bad. It's how we learn and evolve and grow. As we surrender into our conscious evolution, it involves us asking relevant questions and mindfully living out the answer. Mindfully paying attention to the question, to the guidance, to the answer, to the thought, to the emotion, to the action. We do all of that. So as we're mindfully living out the answer, conscious evolution sometimes require that we let go of an outer existing experience. Letting go of what we know, what we believe we know, puts us into something we call chaos. It's almost equally as scary as patience. Wouldn't you say? Chaos, patience, chaos, patience. I don't know, they're both terrible. <laughs> because we decided to make them so. Remember, our thinking creates our experience. If we label it as bad, we will experience it as bad. We will share it as bad. Others will believe it is bad because we believe it is bad. However, if we can then dance through the experience of chaos with ease and grace, knowing that it will change in 10 minutes, just like the weather, it's not that big of a deal. Chaos is nothing more than the evolutionary imperative pushing us forward to expand into whatever greatness is ours. It is the universe unfolding into a creative urge. It's really no different from this beautiful butterfly who started out as a cocoon, a caterpillar, went into his chrysalis. Even for us as human beings, that natural impulse to evolve takes over. We all started out as little itty bitty babies and went to toddlers and elementary students and then teenagers, young adults, older adults, wise sages. Do we not go through that evolution? Kicking and screaming, yes I know, but forget that part for now. Life mandates that we evolve or perish. Evolve or perish. Evolve or die. There is no holding on to holding on to holding on. Did you stop yourself from growing up? No. You couldn't grow up fast enough. I'm sure your parents and family will tell you that. So we get to choose if we are going to resist our evolution and suffer, or if we are going to embrace our evolution so that we can unfold into that beautiful butterfly or whatever it is that we in our soul is meant to become. During the study of these six chapters in this book, our author Robert Brummett has outlined the steps for us as conscious evolutionaries. We are to make friends with paradox, the polarities that seem opposite. They're not good or bad, they just are. We are to cultivate the power of attention, mindfulness, and intention, using our thoughts to, as partners with the divine to co-create our world. We are to embrace everything and be attached to nothing. 
our attachments, our labels, our good, our bad, our judgment causes suffering. It's not good nor bad, it just is. How you respond to it is the critical component. And then, of course, listen, listen, listen. The universe is guiding you with every step. The divine impulse of the universe is speaking to you in your mind, in your heart, in your experiences, through one another, through a song, through a movie, through a billboard. There are so many clues Be aware. And then, in order for us to birth a new world, to birth a greater reality, we must dance with chaos. We must move and flow with the ebb and flow of the universal life. Just as a river flows around the rocks and logs that have fallen in or been there to begin with, we too must shift. Be like water. Before we transcend to the next level, we must surrender into and center ourselves into what is the evolutionary impulse. Allow it to unfold in your life experience. It already has many, 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 many times in your life. Recognize that you have had this push, this pull of the evolutionary impulse, and you're doing fine. Was it fun? Maybe. Was it challenging? Maybe. Did you grow from it? Maybe. Did you contract temporarily? Maybe. But did you expand? Yes. As a conscious evolutionary, you are stepping into a new dimension of life. The universe is now consciously evolving through you. The divine pattern within each of us, in our soul, is being activated through your heart's deepest desire. They sang about that earlier in service. You are pregnant with divine potential to co-create anything you desire. You are making a quantum leap into your own evolution, into fulfilling your life's purpose, which is to become a fully conscious expression of the one power and one presence, God. Lovingly known as fill in your name. So we're going to affirm that. Affirm with me. I am a conscious evolutionary. I am making a quantum leap in fulfilling my purpose in this life, which is to become a fully conscious expression of the one presence that is called joy. I think we can do that with a little more gusto. All right, then. Ready? I am a conscious evolutionary. I am making a quantum leap in fulfilling my purpose in this life, which is to become a fully conscious expression of the one presence that is called joy. Yes. I see a lot of smiling going on. Are you liking it? All right, good, let's do it again. I am a conscious evolutionary. I am making a quantum leap in fulfilling my purpose in this life, 
which is to become a fully conscious expression of the one presence that is called joy. Ah, don't you just feel so tingly all over? All right. Robert Crosby, known as the friendly philosopher, simplifies these ideas by saying that the one self appears only to be divided among all of its creatures. But in reality, it is not divided at all. Each being is that one presence in their essential nature. In that one presence is the foundation of all power. In that one presence lies the power of unfolding, of evolution, which makes it possible for each and every being to represent the one life, the attainment of the full knowledge of life in their own true nature. Such is the whole course of evolution, always from within going outwards and always with the tendency for an increasing of individuality. From the ocean of life, there fully tends to arise the divinity. So we're going to, at this time, prepare for our time of meditation. So you will need to be mindful of where you set down your yellow and purple pieces of paper. You will need those when you come out of your meditation time. Pens are in the seat back pockets. And so I invite you to prepare for meditation. And as we begin, I invite you to become comfortable. Take a moment to relax, to close your outer eyes, to comfortably rest, relaxing more deeply into the chair that supports you. In this sacred space, you are safe, you are loved, you are whole. And so as we allow our conscious mind to go ever so deeper, deeper within, we allow ourselves to connect with the presence of God at the core of our being. And taking another deep cleansing breath, relax with a sigh. Do that one more time and give yourself full permission to relax deeply. Noticing how the body begins to relax. There is nothing to do. Let all concern for your body temple simply dissolve. Continue to breathe. Continue to relax. And allow any tension to gently fade away. Any emotions should be now settling down. Notice your mind come into a state of neutrality. And if there are any loose, unnecessary thoughts let them gently fade away. And 
relaxing ever more. Allow your mind to shift into universal consciousness, gently flowing in unison with the divine mind. The divine mind is where you live and move and have your being. You are one with all that is. You are one with all that is. And as we allow that oneness to overtake your entire being, your mind and your heart, allow an image to unfold in your mind from this divine presence showing you a greater reality for yourself, showing you a greater reality for your life experience. And with that, showing you a greater reality for this spiritual community. Resting ever more gently at even a greater depth. Allow these images to take form as the divine within sees fit. A greater reality can only be born from our perfect union with the divine. And as we sink into that divine oneness, allow yourself to see those images being revealed to you for yourself, for your life, for this community. In the silence. In the silence. Ever so gently, ever so gently, allow yourself to bring with you the images gifted to you by the divine of your greater reality for yourself the greater reality for your life, the greater reality for this spiritual community. Allow these images to stay with you in your mind, in your heart, in every cell of your being. It is now a part of you shared by the divine for you and only you. Bring that clarity of the divine presence into this outer world and share its visions. Gently open your eyes and you may write on the papers, write your personal image on the purple paper, for that is yours to keep. And write the image shared through you for this spiritual community on the yellow paper. That one will be returned to the ushers as we use the power of attention and intention to evolve into a greater reality and co-create a world that works for all. Just jot a few notes, the vision that you were seen within your mind, 
within your heart as we listen to this music for just a moment. Allow the image shared by the divine to be written down. Do not add to, expand, or interpret. Just share what was shared with you. Trust that the universe has spoken through you to unfold a greater reality in your life. Feel free to continue writing through the next song if spirit leads you to do so. Make sure it is spirit and not your ego who shares these truths, this vision for your continued evolution. And as Eleanor Roosevelt said, with the new day comes new strength and new thoughts. Be open to the inspiration of spirit in all forms and listen, listen, listen. Namaste.